As the recession comes to an end, we see new shops opening all over the country. Jenny Davey talks to small business owners, old and new, about their experiences and how things are changing for them. With so many small businesses recently failing, I talked to Susan Day, the owner of Attleborough Sewing Shop Susan's Work Basket, to find out how she's managed to keep her business going during the recession. So you started your business just as the recession was starting to take hold. How did that affect you? Well, it's difficult to say what effect it had because obviously um, I hadn't got the business myself before. Probably it helped us in a way because we've had to build up a business, encourage people to still come shopping because I haven't had anything to compare with. So if anything, we've just gone steadily up and up and got better and better. Would you say the recession is now over? It's probably peaked, but of course with all the new government cuts and the VAT rise, things could well change in the new year. So that will be our next challenge to have to ride. Yeah, that will be interesting. <laughs> yes, the VAT goes up to 20% now. How much does that affect your prices? Um, it won't affect the prices too much. The customers won't really reflect too much an increase on that because the items are mostly small. More that will make the prices go up is the increase in oil and such, which affects acrylic wool, would you believe, an offshoot from oil. And um, the cotton industry had a bad growth this year and um, so the cost of cotton will double more than the price of VAT. Susan started her business when the previous owners retired. However, Shirley Ives, who ran a wool shop in 1976, had no customer base to build from. I asked her how she started her shop and how the sense of community has changed between then and now. What made me want to open a wool shop? Well, a very dear old man left me £10,000. But when I'd squared everything up, all the bills and everything, I had £1,500 left and I thought, no, this is mine. I am going to do something I've always wanted to do. I used to do alterations for Mr McKelvey. And he came here one day and asked me if I'd do his alterations, and I said I would. And we sat talking one day over a cup of coffee. I said I'd always want a wool shop. And two or three days later, he'd come up again. And he said, well, would you like the front room of the house? And that's how it started. The first woman that walked through the door, I didn't have what she wanted. And that absolutely creased me up. <laughs> but that went from strength to strength to strength. When we were snowed in... Tractors used to come to my shop. He was a one chap come with a, a plastic dustbin. And he had this order from his wife for all this wool. And it was that sort of thing. But they wouldn't only come and get wool for their wives. They would have gone down the road and seen if Mrs A, B, C and D wanted anything. And that's how it was. To what it is now, to then, there's no comparison. Lately, of course, the weather has once again been causing a great deal of problems around the country. I asked Susan if it's affected her business. Due to the adverse weather conditions, I have to say that small shops benefit because people in the town I live in do not or cannot travel to the city and we have been far busier because of that. A shop local for Christmas campaign is running in Norfolk to encourage people to use local shops instead of larger stores. I wondered how Susan has benefited from this scheme. Um, it's quite good to encourage people, but I do find that people who are going to shop local do it all year round, not just at Christmas. Certainly my customers do anyway. Larger stores will always be a threat to locally run shops. I asked Susan whether the recent opening of a hobby craft in nearby Norwich worries her. Um, not really. Uh, it sells the same stuff possibly as we do, but a lot bigger. But like a customer said to me today, they're not going to go all the way to Norwich just for a reel of thread. Yeah, no, I don't think that will bother us too much. Competition's healthy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing these larger businesses offer is the option to shop online. Many smaller shops felt they also need to use the internet to expand their business, or even just to keep it going. Wendy Brook, a fellow Attleboro business owner, explains why she decided to take her business online. The reason I decided to start online is because I've got this feeling that the small high street shops do need another branch to their business to help them to keep going. However, it's not something that everyone's interested in. I asked Susan and Shirley whether they would be interested in taking their businesses online. No, I don't think, even knowing what I do about the internet now, no, I don't think that would have been beneficial at all because the shop was based on personal things. 
Knitting can be very, very personal. The internet would have been handy for me to get information from, but not to give it out. Have you ever been tempted to start an online part of the business? Um, obviously, it's going to be part of the future, but it's not something I have considered at the moment. We like the personal touch, I have to say. And I understand you can order things in for people if you don't have any. We certainly so. can. If we don't have what they want, we will do our utmost to get what they want and as soon as possible for them. The personal touch certainly is something many people prefer. I asked members of the public whether they would rather shop at a small local shop or a large chain store. I like them both because I like to go to the small shop and get the personal service but then I like to go to the larger shops like Sainsbury's so I can have the choice. I prefer shopping at larger businesses simply because everything's in the same place and it's usually cheaper. I do prefer the smaller shops because you do get the personal service. I prefer the smaller shop because you get more service. If you buy something the lady behind the counter would probably know what you need. If you go in a big shop in Norwich, probably they don't know. And I've got that from personal experience. Well, I think everybody prefers the smaller shop, but unfortunately, times are changing, things are expensive, and the average people bringing up a family cannot afford to go to small shops to buy the things that they really need, so they go to supermarkets for them. Well, it seems that small businesses aren't quite out of the woods yet, but should anything happen, I think it's safe to say they would be sorely missed. Are things really changing to favour those larger stores? I think only time will tell. Until then, let's remember the local shops and that personal service we all prefer.